Okay, so, hey, my name is Whitney Nosley, and today is Wednesday. So, in case you don't know, I run a Facebook group for cash flow queens of real estate, okay? So, it's women who are in real estate, or they want to be in real estate, or they're kind of thinking they want to be in real estate, and they just aren't sure yet. So, if you're in that group, great, awesome, cool. If you're not in my cash flow queens of real estate group, get in there. It's really, really fun. And right now, it is ladies only. Right now. I am strongly considering opening it up for men because it turns out men want to be real estate investors too. And if men want to listen to me and figure out how to do real estate, then I'm good. Okay, so today's Ask Wit Wednesday, and if you have a question that comes up, Ask Wit Wednesday, you can put it in the comments. Okay, so Ask Wit Wednesday, the first question that I had today was from one of the ladies in the group, and she wants to know if I have any advice for how to work with wholesalers. Okay, and I spoke to a guy today, and I was talking to him, and I was talking about real estate, and blah, 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 and I said something about wholesalers, and he was like, I said something about wholesalers, and blah, 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 and kept going, and he was like, hold on, what's a wholesaler? Okay, so let's start there tonight. What is a wholesaler? And I am not a wholesaler. I'm a broker. I'm an investor. I'm a mentor. I do a lot of things in real estate except wholesale. And yesterday, in the middle of all of the stuff, I put up a post from Zillow, sorry, um, that one of my friends had put up. And what happened was, I found a deal on some apartments. I was not sure that I was gonna be able to complete the flip on them, so I sold them to another investor. I got the deal got it on paperwork, got it all written out, signed, whatever. And then I sold that deal. I signed that deal. I transferred that paper in my name with my company going to do the deal into another investor's company, into another investor's name. Okay. And that's, that's wholesaling. And usually Wholesaling, and I say usually, um, if Ramon or Dennis or Aunt Pam or any wholesalers are on here tonight, they will tell you that wholesaling has a lot of different moving parts, but wholesaling is when you're going to go into a neighborhood and you're probably going to find the ugliest house in that neighborhood, or if you're going into an ugly neighborhood, then you just start picking up houses as far as you can go, and you get, when you're a wholesaler, you get the rock bottom cash price, not going to take any less. This is it. Okay. You get that price and you get it on contract. You get it on a piece of paper. You agree that you're going to close this deal in 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days at this rock bottom price as a wholesaler. And then just like if you were wholesaling trees or wholesaling cars or wholesaling uh, knitting supplies, you would take your supply, you would take your inventory, you take this house, this contract, and you would throw it out into the world and you would say, all right, any investors want this deal? I've got a sweet deal. It's got, it needs this much work. It's this price. I'm making this much. Y'all can have it, but you got to close quickly. You got to come and bring me cash. Okay. And then the wholesaler, the person that found this property, they get a fee. They get a finder's fee. They get a, a transfer fee. They get an assignment fee. They get a wholesaling fee. And wholesalers do this without a license. Okay? So if you've got an old junky house, wholesalers probably want to deal with you. Okay? They'll get the rock bottom price. They will, just like an insurance broker, they're going to shop this price out in the market, they've got cash buyers, they know flippers, they know investors, they know people who want to have houses, and so they put the deal out in front of these people and they try to make it work. If their cash buyer falls out the day before closing, then 
Hopefully they've got another cash buyer or three lined up to take over this property. So that's what a wholesaler is and that's what a wholesaler does, okay? I don't wholesale, I don't like it because it's just like listing a house, you get paid once. It's a one hit wonder, that's all you get. One paycheck and I don't like it. I'd rather get paid, you know, it's usually three or four times as much money and you get paid three or four times as often. Okay, so wholesalers, I've seen wholesalers make $1,000 and I've seen wholesalers make $40,000 on a deal. Cool, awesome, perfect. But if I had worked on that deal, I would have gotten probably ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars up front to do the deal. I would have made two, three, maybe five hundred dollars a month on the deal. And then in a year or two, I would have tried to make another ten or twenty or fifty thousand dollars. And it's totally doable. Once you have the leads, and the leads, that's what you need. You need houses, you need inventory, you need to get out and find stuff. And it's not that difficult to find stuff. It's like really super easy actually. But once you have those leads, why would you just want to get paid once? You're doing all the work right up front. I'd rather do it all up front, get paid for buying a house, and then continue to get paid for keeping the house. Okay, it's so easy, it's so easy to continue to get paid on a deal. So, that's a wholesaler, that's how wholesaling works. My question was advice for working with wholesalers. Drew says he wants the leads. You can find a wholesaler, okay? And this goes back to the lady's question. What's some advice for working with a wholesaler? If you are a cash buyer and you want to do fix and flips or you want to do buy and holds but you don't want to sign a buyer's agency agreement with a real estate agent because they've got the same thing that you could see on the MLS. And see that's what wholesalers are good at. They find deals that are off market and they bring them to cash buyers. So if you want off market properties and you don't want to hunt for them, you don't want to advertise for them, you don't want to sniff it out yourself, then find a wholesaler in your area and say, hey, I've got this much cash. What do you have that I could buy? And if you don't have anything that I could buy right now for this much money, call me next time you have it. And wholesalers do get paid, okay? If they go out, if a wholesaler goes out and they find, say they find a house that's worth $100,000 and they lock it up uh, for $40,000. They may sell it for $40,000 and a $10,000 wholesale fee, which is $50,000. But if the house is worth $100,000 and you can get it for $50,000, if that fits your ARV and that fits your MAKO and that fits your formulas and that fits your, uh, private money lenders, if that fits everything that you need it to fix, pay them and get it and move on. Okay? If 45000 would make the deal work, then tell the wholesaler, wholesaler, look, here's my numbers. Here's what I'm working with. This is what I need to make on this deal. This is what I'm looking at. And I can't give you 10000 but I can give you 5000 They're a good wholesaler. And it's that good of a deal. And you're the only one talking to them. They might take it. They might take a $5,000 payday. They might hold out and get somebody to give them seven. They might hold out and get somebody to give them 10. But wholesaling is, can be very fun. It can also be very stressful. So if you are going to work with a wholesaler, they are probably going to want you to prove that you actually have this much cash. Okay. They might want financial statements. They might want want a bank statement, they might want something that shows them that you're good for this much amount of money. And they should know that too. You, as the money person, you should have some formulas so that you don't just believe what the wholesaler tells you, okay? Just like I would tell you not to believe everything the real estate agent tells you, okay? Just because the agent says this is a great investment opportunity, Prove it. 
okay? Just because they think it's a great investment makes me want to say, well, why don't you buy it? Why'd you list it instead of buying if it's this great investment opportunity? So you need to know your numbers. You need to know your formulas. You need to know what you're looking at so that you don't risk losing any money or you don't risk losing any time or any effort or any energy. Okay? Don't even fool with it. So advice for working with wholesalers? Find as many wholesalers as you can in your area, in your neighborhood. And if you don't know how to find a wholesaler, go to a really popular four-way stop in your city on a weekend. And there should be three or four different signs that say, I buy houses. We buy houses cash. We buy houses close quickly. Or some variation of that. Call those people because, one, they're trying to build a buyer's list. They need people. They're probably a wholesaler. They need people to buy their houses when they find them. And they're also building a seller list. So if you have something to sell, call those signs. It's, it is literally that easy to find a wholesaler. Call the number on the sign that says, I buy houses. If they're not a wholesaler, they probably know six. And they would be glad to put you on their buyer's list. Okay? All right. Um, so this next question, is, this is my, this is the third question. We'll go back to the second one in a second. The third question is, and it kind of goes along with wholesalers. And I had to write down the whole question because I'm not really sure I understand it. But it says... How do I know the property investor price is not the ARV when dealing with the wholesaler? Okay, so I just explained what the wholesaler is, right? So the next thing I need to explain is ARV, A-R-V. That's the after repaired value. That's the retail list price for this house. Once it's been repaired, once the investors bought it, the wholesalers bought it, the agents listed it, and we're going to go to closing with a mortgage broker, that is the ARV. And the ARV doesn't change. Okay, when you buy the house, you need to know what ARV is. When you sell the house, you need to hit ARV because it doesn't change. Okay, so this lady said, how do I know the property investor price is not the ARV when dealing with wholesalers? And I'm not really sure what she's asking. I think what she wants to know is how do I figure ARV? How do I know what the wholesaler is making? How do I know if I'm making any money? So if you're on, I don't even remember who sent me this question now, but if that's what you want to know, you need to know how to calculate ARV. Okay, in my third week of my class, I teach the ladies how to calculate ARV. And it's pretty simple. It never changes. You have to know what ARV is to be able to make a cash offer. You have to know ARV so you can have a MAKO or a MAO or whatever it is you want to call it. You have to know ARV. ARV is the number one formula when we talk about flipping houses, when we talk about buying houses. And the problem I have with ARV is that it doesn't work. Well, ARV works, but MAKO doesn't work when we're talking about owner financing and lease options. So... Arv and Mako, good to know. I don't make cash offers with all cash and plan on closing like a wholesaler would, but it is important when you are dealing with wholesalers, okay? So how do I know the property investor price is not the Arv when dealing with wholesalers? Okay, so what this lady is saying is, say there's a $100,000 house. I'm from PAL. I like easy numbers, okay? Let's say there's a $100,000 house and the ARV is $100,000. So after everything's said and done, the house is worth $100,000. So she's saying, how does she know what the wholesale price is versus the ARV price? And that's when it really comes down to the formula. You have to know is ARV at 100,000 because all the comps are at 100,000? Is ARV at 100,000 because they owe 100,000 and the comps are actually 150? 
Is it a hundred thousand dollar house and they only need thirty thousand dollars to pay off their tax liens from last year? So I, I can't answer this because I don't know what the wholesaler is charging in this case. I don't know why you're working with a wholesaler to start with. I don't I don't work with wholesalers. I find my own deals. I teach my people how to find their own deals so they don't have to work with real estate agents or wholesalers or anything else like that. So I feel like I can't really answer this question because I just don't understand it. If you know your formulas, if you know what ARV is, if you know what the MAKO is, you ought to be able to figure out the wholesaler, figure the wholesaler's making $10,000. Who cares? If you can still make money, who cares what the wholesaler is making on the deal? It doesn't matter. I don't care if it was a great big house or a great big commercial apartment unit. If the wholesaler is going to make $100,000 and I could still make $100,000, I don't care. Okay? They make money. I make money. They make money. These people make like That is fine with me. Let's all have fun and make money. Okay? Like, it's that easy. And that's the other reason I don't like the competition word because... I want everybody to win. I want everybody to be a real estate investor. I want everybody to know how awesome it is to improve the neighborhood. Any neighborhood. I'm flipping a house right now in a lake house community. They got a marina. They got a private boat dock. I'm flipping a house there. I'm improving the neighborhood. It doesn't have to be a crack house to improve it. Okay? You can improve any neighborhood. You can. I promise. Okay, so the last question that we have, unless, if y'all have a question, put it in the comments here, okay? It's Ask Wit Wednesday. So my third question for today, and this comes from one of my students, like in my VIP program, and she says, what if she finds a seller in a 55 plus community? That's a good question. So a 55 plus community, there's a bunch of these in Florida, there's a bunch of these in California, there may be a bunch of these in some other states, but 55 plus communities are just what they sound like. It's a bunch of old farts living in that neighborhood, right? Okay, you have to be 55 years old or older to buy a house in this neighborhood, okay? We have a friend, mom and I have a friend that works at one of the banks here in Knoxville, and she has a house in Florida in a 55 plus neighborhood. She's 55 plus. Her husband is 55 plus. They, they don't have any kids running around the neighborhood. It's, you know, scheduled activities. It's trips. It's an awesome thing for mobile. I don't want to say elderly. My mom's 50. She's probably watching. She's like, no, Whitney, I'm not old. But a 55 plus community is people who are 55 plus. And guess what? There's a lot of people that are older than 55 out in this world. And a lot of them want to live in a 55 plus community. So the girl in my group, lady in my group, who has found this deal wants to know what she can do with it. Well, the lady that I'm working with is not 55. Okay, so she has found a seller in a 55 plus community who wants to sell their house to her. And the problem is she's not 55, so she can't buy it. But she can wholesale it. She can assign it. She can set up an owner financing or a lease option, get an assignment fee, and then give it assign it to somebody else who is 55. If you find a house and somebody in a 55 plus community and they want to sell it to you, buy it. Get a contract on it. Do your formulas, figure out your R, figure out your Mako, take control of that property and make some money, honey. Now, she and I need to talk specifically about this deal, but there's nothing wrong with buying a house in a 55 plus community. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're 55, you want to have a house in here? Fine, go get you one. 
If somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, Whit, I've got a house in Gatlinburg. It's a 55 plus community. Do you want to buy it? Yeah, I want to buy it. Now, I can't close on it because I'm not 55 and your HOA won't let me. But I will take that contract and I will sell it to somebody who is 55 and can close on it. Yes, thank you. Good night. Okay? Like, I talked to somebody else about this this morning. Y'all don't make real estate more complicated than it needs to be. It is really not that complicated. Okay? If you find a seller who wants to get rid of their house, you're an investor, you want to buy a house, all we gotta do now is figure out the details. How much do you want? Will you take terms? Can I owner finance this? Do I need to go to the bank? Do, should I find somebody else? It's real easy. Okay? Real estate is just a series of little bitty small steps that you take and you repeat and you rinse and you repeat until suddenly you got a big giant portfolio and you're making more money in your side real estate portfolio than you are at your job, which is just over broke. I talked to a lot of real estate agents and they're like, I have a closing in two weeks and if, if it closes, I'll, I'll take your course. But if it doesn't close, then I don't know what I'm going to do. I told a lady this today. She said basically that, that she, she told me that she was going to buy a house by January, an investment house. I asked her, she didn't have a formula. She didn't have a strategy. She figured that she'd go to the bank, put 20% down, and then buy a house. So I said, how much is that gonna cost you? And she said, oh, about 10 grand. And I said, $10,000. You're going to go buy a house. Just figure it out. huh? How do you know if you're making any money? Well, if I can pay the mortgage, I'm making any money. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Okay? Just because you're paying the mortgage, that don't mean you're actually making any money. Because what happens when the roof needs to be re replaced and you got to go take out a loan to replace the roof? Oop, you're sunk. What if you pay too much for the property and the toilet overflows and messes up the whole bathroom? What if the basement gets flooded and it messes up everything downstairs and then you're paying out of pocket another $10,000 and then suddenly you're underwater on this property? You cannot just go to the bank, put 10% down, put 20% down, put 10,000 down, whatever, go buy a house and just say, oh, everything's hunky-dory now. You cannot do that. You have to have a plan. You have to have an exit strategy. You have to have a backup plan. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how to run comps. Talked to a guy this morning and I was comp, 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 comp. And he was like, what's a comp? And I was like, uh, okay, learning lesson for me. A comp is a comparable sale, okay? If all the houses in the neighborhood are selling for $100,000, the comparable sales, comparable sales for the neighborhood are $100,000. Okay? So if you find a house in this neighborhood for $30,000, that's probably a good buy. If you find a house in this neighborhood for $90,000, that's probably a disaster. Okay? You're not really making any money there. Especially if you're going to a bank to get financed on it because they're going to have origination fees. They're going to have closing costs. They're going to have agents involved probably. They're going to have all sorts of crap and you're going to be $105,000, $110,000 into a $100,000 house that you're going to rent out and pay off over 30 years. It sounds like crap to me. Okay? And that wasn't my plan when I started. I bought a house with money, just winging it, just throwing money at it, just like, yeah, it'll all work out. And then when I got a plan, I figured out a formula, it was going to take me 152 years to get this house profitable to be able to buy another house. 
don't know about y'all, but I don't have 152 years. So if I need to be a big fancy real estate investor, I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do it than going to the bank or putting my life savings on the line or having somebody pull my credit or finding a private money lender. Like, it's just too easy to have to do all that crap. And frankly, it's not your fault if you think that's the way real estate has to be done. It's not really your fault because, I mean, started in like the sixth grade when they give you math problems and it's like, hey, uh, Joe and Sally bought a house. It's on a 30-year 30 30 year note, balloons in five. What are their payments every month? Well, that's just really easy. You just kind of figure it out. You put all the numbers in properly. I've actually got an app on my phone to figure that out, so I don't have to. But some people would not know how to start that process. Or, since they started that process in their brain when they were in the sixth grade, figuring out a mortgage and figuring out origination fees and going to the bank and having good credit so you can do all this crap, they think that's the only way to do it. And it's not. Sherry, what's the app? I went over this app. Uh, I can't remember which video it's in right now, but it's in the program. I'll send you a message to tell you which video it's in. Or I'll put it in the REI Rockstar group so that everybody knows what app it's in. Because um, I can't think of the name of it right now. But I actually go through the app and show you how to use it in that video. Okay, but anyway. Please do not do real estate the boring way. Please do not do real estate the old-fashioned, the slow, the obnoxious way where you only look at listed properties that an agent has so that they make all their commission and don't even... Oh, I talked to another lady today and this is a lady that follows me. She's in my group. She bought the uh, Quick Start program. And so I'm training her. She's not in the VIP program quite yet. But she told me today, she actually sent me an email last night and it was like a five or six sentence thing and I'm like a rat on acid, I can't read an email that long. So I told her, I was like, just call me today. Call me today, we'll get it, we'll get it figured out. She told me, and I hope it's okay with her if I say this, she has a house and something happened in her life in the past couple years and she has had to file bankruptcy. She's thinking about putting the house in foreclosure. Like she hasn't started all these really negative things yet, but she's really close, okay? So this time last year, she had an agent, a real estate agent come and list her property. This woman owes 260 on her house, $260,000 on her house. And she's getting ready to file foreclosure and bankruptcy and everything and just walk away from it. Okay, the agent that came to her last year when she started being in all this trouble listed it for three ninety nine. That agent had it for six months. Another agent came by. This woman still owes two sixty, 260, two sixty five, probably at this point. And the second agent said, "Oh, honey, I'll just list it for three fifty. We'll sell it real fast." This woman is $40,000 behind in her payments and I was flipping out with her on the phone. Like, don't call me and don't sign up for my program if you've got thin skin. Like, if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you my honest gut reaction response to it. And if you can't handle that, then don't hire me. I'm not your girl, okay? But if you need somebody that's going to give it to you straight and honest, right here, hey. So, this woman... Owes two sixty on a house. She's got one jerk agent that lists it for three ninety nine. Wastes six months of her life. She's got another POS agent that comes by and lists it for three fifty. Wastes another six months of this woman's life. And I was like, stop it! You go get that contract, get that agent, grab her by the hair, do whatever you got to. You tell her that she needs to. Get your house sold and put it at a reasonable rate. I mean, drop it to two eighty five. dollars Tell you'll give her $25,000 and she can split it either way she wants to. But you've got to get this house sold. It's not this agent's credit on the line. She don't care. She's looking for another commission. She just needs another yard to hang her sign on. Which is completely against the ethics. Like, 
ethics of real estate say that you will do the best for your client and trying to get a gigantic price that's not making the house move is not doing the best for your client. It's not. If your client owes 260 and they're facing foreclosure, you need to get them 260, get what you can on a commission and move. Because they will tell 18,000 people how awesome you were. That money that you might have missed on that one commission will come back to you 18 fold because you actually helped somebody. But these agents she's dealing with aren't paying attention. I told her to cancel her contract and she can sell that house. She can probably offload it in one weekend. And uh, Stephanie Mann, are you on here? Because Stephanie had the same problem. She had a property that would not sell. She called me. I jerked her around, told her what she needed to do. And by Wednesday, she sold it. Tracy, Tracy, are you on here? Tracy did the same thing. Tracy, bless her heart. She was one of my new students. She'd been flipping a house, working on it for entirely too long. But it was a Saturday night. I was at the lake house. She sent me a message and she was kind of like, wee, wee, wee. I called her and she's on her way to dinner Saturday night. It's like her son's birthday party or something. And I'm like barking at her on the phone in front of God and her whole family. And guess what? On Tuesday, after I yelled at her on Saturday, and I don't really mean I yelled at her, but I talk kind of strong when I get worked up. By Tuesday, she was sitting in the attorney's office writing up a contract because she'd rented that place. And these agents have been jerking around for three months. It pisses me off so bad. So, if you're one of my students, I get heavily involved in you because I want you to succeed. If you're one of my friends, I don't want anybody taking advantage of you. If you got any questions, let me know. You can drop it in the comments. I do Ask Wit Wednesday every week, usually in the group, but I will try to do it more often here. So that's my piece. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, let me know. If an agent is jerking you around, sometimes you can help it and sometimes you can't. If a wholesaler is jerking you around, sometimes you can help it and sometimes you can't. But at the end of the day, it's your money, it's your butt on the line, it's your deal, and not theirs. So protect yourself. Okay? Bye, y'all. Good night. My phone's dying, so I'm out.